Welcome back to another episode of All Star Garage. This time round, we're going to show more of the P4 because we couldn't squeeze it all in the last episode. We've still got brakes to sort out, try and work what we're doing with that. We're waiting for a Evil Bay Special Master Cylinder Rebuild Kit, but I think from last year, I already put one in it, and it was so rusty and pitted, it didn't really work, but we can try again. Um, obviously, we've got no back brakes at all. They're air-conditioned, so they don't exist. The front ones on this one are drum brakes, so they're probably worse than calipers and discs, but I've no idea if they work or they leak or that's another problem that we're going to come across. You just got to have something, you know, because we can't throw an anchor out and we can't have a parachute or a big pair of pants to hold out the window to slow down and we've got to have something to, just to stop us running someone over in the pits or something because it'd be busy and we've got to have something because otherwise that's a, another kettle of fish or flatfish, I suppose, if you run one over. Anyway, um, yeah, we've done that. I've also made a new purchase or two, so you'll see that, and plenty more talking rubbish along the way. Hope you enjoy it. Obviously, if you do, hit that subscribe button down there if you haven't already. That does us a massive favor. Um, a like or anything like that, it all goes a really long way. So if you can do that, that'd be amazing. Um, I'm gonna stop talking. Here we go. And well, now we can need I it. answer his question now? Because he is of the younger generation. Yeah. He doesn't understand how his carburetor works. On the bottom of this piston here is a needle. Yeah. And it's tapered. And that goes down through the little hole there, which is your fuel supply. So what you do is when on vacuum, when you throttle it, and that draws, that lifts this piston up, which then lets fuel in through there. And because it's tapered, the higher this comes, the more fuel comes in. And it sucks it through the manifold into the air. So that's why when it's not running, that don't lift up, right? That won't do nothing all the time it's not running. Oh, right, because it runs on vacuum. But when it's running and it's drawing, that will lift that up. Because obviously on, that, on a Weber... The more you open it up, the more fuel it let in because it's tapered going into yeah. your... Because obviously on a Weber, you press the throttle and it opens both flaps, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, because it's a man mechanical Yeah, car, because right? it's mechanical. That runs so that's got a cable, it. turns... turns so basically, it's that, just that, over that, that only opens your flaps, doesn't it? And then it draws it. On a, Do Web, you, on a Weber, you've got to pump in them. Do you like open flaps? <laughs> Do I like open flaps? I prefer Webers. How have we got onto that subject when we're talking about carburetors? Because you said about open flaps. Yeah. Oh, right. When this fires up in a minute, if Wayne stands in front of it, I reckon I we'll have, have an orgasm. I reckon there'll be seven cylinders instead of six. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's Thursday afternoon. I got a phone call yesterday from Jason Barrow from Cortec Metal Recycling in Hawkehurst. George Stickner, Jason Barrow down there. Um, they said, Pete, someone's just brought a car in. Complete Jag, 3.2 litre. Do you want it? I went, not really, I haven't got space. I went, oh, well, you know, it's on the button. It's got a couple of months MOT on it. So I did the right thing and brought that sight unseen. That's just been dropped off. Um, so what I've done is insured it um, and just took it down Tesco's to give it a test run and it drives like a pig. The brakes are stuck on, uh, it pulls to the right. I don't think it's got any brake pads in it. Um, it doesn't start, so the only way it starts is with easy start. And then it's all right. And then it was meant to be all right when it was warm, but it still doesn't start, so that needs looking at. Um, new road goer is what we're saying. That's the new A to B from home to yard and school run rig. I mean, come on. That's cool, right? With the kids in the back and saggy headliner. No, probably not. Anyway, so. Then this morning I get another phone call from Jason again saying, Pete, you'll never believe it, we've got another one. Yeah.
Look what I have produced. Your caliper. Hey. Nice. Caliper's absolutely shiny. That scrap. Lucky I have two more. Nice. I'm sweating. <laughs> Look at the Pirelli P6000s there. Fun fact, race fans. Most modern tyres, or all modern tyres now, should have a date on them. This Hold tire on. was made in the 51st week of 2011. So that's a 13 year old tyre. Nice. It's getting warm in here. Amazingness disc. Nice. Oh, squirter. Perfect. What about the XJR alloys? I've got a full set of them somewhere. The what? The ones on the back of the XK8. Oh, I've got movement there. <laughs> Passenger side shock absorber. Why is there never a battery charged up? Where's the 19 gone? I don't know. 19 or three quarter? 19. What, spanner or socket? Socket. I can't help you with that, I'm afraid. some stuff upstairs on an old axle so we're just gonna I don't think it's right it's not I'm not sure it's not the right bits but we're just gonna pack that out because at the minute you go down the road and it goes dum, 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 what's it do I'm not doing it again I just gave myself a headache <laughs> Stop that. This is what we're. Uh, so we've got the Pirelli P6000s, right, that are 300 years old. And I don't think I've ever actually seen pads like this in my life, which is quite a statement. I think she was run on a budget. <clears throat> but luckily we have some spares. That's on a spanner. Oh, yeah. Is that because it's different size and it's just welded itself to it? Yep. Oh! Oh no. Many things in the way. Stinks of um, thingy. Easy start. Yeah. Yeah. Bad. Oh, that's been packed out before then. You've been here before? I, I must have worked on this already. Look, someone had packed the shock wrap for 24 mil nut. Oh yeah, freebies. I've definitely worked on this in the past time. Mm. <laughs> That's fixed. Oh. I'm gonna have to go upstairs, aren't I? Yeah. Do you want your step ladder or are you gonna No, I've got my real ladder. Have you? Off? Off? I'm off. Hmm, stiffness. If that's still sticking, that might be that flexi that's knackered. Uh, I'll let you know once we find the hill bar. Might do. Because that's the one that was binding before. No, you're right. <coughs> it's just me being a fairy. Right, where are you now? Up. Go down. Oh, yeah. That'll do. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, you put the nib. There you go. Okay, here we go. New company vehicle. Uh. Okay, so as you've just heard, 
a little bit of a starting problem. So we've devised this uh, plastic pipe that goes through the bulkhead along underneath the window wiper mechanism into the inlet manifold where we just drilled a hole and we get out the old starter juice 6000. Give it the old sniff up. But the pipe's a bit too long. This is only the prototype. The pipe's a bit too long to get uphill. So we have to spray it. Then, excuse me, officer. Blow it into the inlet manifold. <laughs> Here we go. I've got scenario here as well. So, excuse the nasal spray because, you know, we've got the cold. Um, you have to inject the screwdriver to get it out of park, then remove the screwdriver, foot on the brake, drive, handbrake off, engage the glasses, and we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at the saggy headlining. Okay, so we got it yesterday with the issue of the brakes. That wasn't great, admittedly. I took Wayne down to Tesco's in it and pretty much couldn't stop, so that's fixed. Luckily, I had that axle upstairs, took the calipers off of that, and the discs and everything, second hand, brand new. Straight in, no problem. Um, the shock absorber was obviously slapping about. That was going digga, 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 over every single like stone every half a second, so that's fixed because I found some bushes off of something, I don't even know what it was. Solved that problem. Um, the can't get it out of park without the screwdriver thing is a bit of an issue, but I've got like 15 jags, so we'll just take the, the center console bit out of one of them. That's not a problem. The roof line is pretty cool. It's got maybe 47, no, 48 staples holding it up, so it definitely needs some more. But the other one we picked up yesterday, that V8 one, had actually, like someone's put wooden tudoring up in the, hold the roof lining up. So I might take that out of that and put it in this. The jack's good though, kick down's good. Oh yeah. It works. Oh yeah, let's go something again. Oh, it's still going. Oh no, the seatbelt's tight, man. Oh yeah. Oh, and the knees are in the dash. Okay. It's luxury though, isn't it? I'd like to have electric seats. I'm used to manual windows. 1996 Sovereign Edition. So it's all the electrics and all the tricks and tronics and whatever else. This one doesn't have the. This one doesn't have the car phone in it though. No. Dog's in the back. He's he's all right. Good chip boy. Right, stuff has arrived. This is probably the same as the one I got last year. It's um, it's some stuff. But this is the issue that we got on the brakes. So the way these P4s work is the pedals are back to front. So rather than the pedals being off the bulkhead and having a master cylinder and everything going through the bulkhead, these go under the floor. So the, this is the pedal that pushes down pushes the piston down which I was missing the pin so I've made that and I've made this that's just enough play in there to make sure it doesn't seize up but all it's got to do is push a piston right so the piston goes in and out pushes the pipes that is your brake system feed comes from the, the pot with the brake fluid in it up top into it and then the pressure side goes out, goes all the way up. We've cut out the servo and everything else. Comes up this pipe here to a T-piece and literally goes into that front wheel and round there and into that front wheel. That is it. It's that simple. So all we've got to do is sort this problem out and hopefully we'll have some sort of breakage 
One thing I will say though, is I'm running out of bolts, because that broke off last year. That one snapped. Did that snap? No, that was already snapped when this lined up. So we have one bolt holding the master cylinder on. Right, so we've got the seals, we've got a workbench that's full of rubbish. Everyone will be the first one to say, Pete, your workshop is a mess when they come in here. Wayne's grill, Tyler, Rob. But I didn't use these sockets. I haven't used these four bolts. I mean, I didn't spend 27 hours the other day trying to make a top water hose with a pump in it. Anyway. Here's the one size fits all spanner. Why are you being like this? We've parted last year together. Let's not, let's not mess about now. We've been friends already. There we go. Spring involved here somewhere, I think. Maybe not. Well, maybe there is. Now you've got to help me remember how this comes apart because I can't. There's a plastic bit. And some. Oh, what's that do? Oh, suctionage. <sighs> hey, what else I need to do? I was meant to fix the lawnmower about two weeks ago for home because it didn't start. And the weather's gorgeous, so I'll probably have to mow the grass this weekend. So I'm gonna have to try and fit that in a minute. There we go. Okay, so the piston goes down like that. What science is this? Sir clippage. Ah, oh, done me in the eye hole. Oh, ah. okay. That's fine. Should come out the bottom now. Maybe. Probably should have watched the video on how to do this. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's a. There's a seal. Here we go. The seals don't look that bad. However, change them anyway because we're here aren't we ah, you I've just had to shut the workshop door because there's a tractor out there just about to start spraying the fields and it's louder than a room full of women at a Magic Mark concert 
problem is you can put all these seals in until the cows come home, but I don't know if you can see down there. It's it's a bit ming. See that rough bit on the edge there, that's all pitted. The idea is obviously the piston goes down inside there like that, inside that tube, but it's got the seal on the end that sits in there. So if the seal's bypassing past the rough bit, same as a hydraulic cylinder with what we do for work. If it's not perfect and doesn't create the perfect seal, that'll just leak like there's no tomorrow. There's one new one. I do remember doing this last year actually. I obviously didn't do it very well. Very much wrong with that. But obviously didn't do it very well because it's still leaking. There's another one. See all the Ming inside there? Shouldn't be there. So anyway, that was just a dust cover for the piston, the other side. You don't need that. And apparently, there's two different types of these seal. This one which we've changed, and this one's just slightly different. When I looked it up online, there's two different types. One takes one, one takes the other. So, going by that theory, we've used every seal that we can use in here. So if it still leaks and plays up now, I reckon it's just because it's tired and it's pitted and it's worn out because it's not very pretty in there. Let's waz her back in. Right, let's try and get this back on here with our one bolt hole. Epic. Got is the trickiest one to get the bolt to line up in. That's great. It's pretty standard. Is that going to cross thread? Probably. Um, yeah, that's not straight. Well, let me just magnetise this on the door. Oh no, I can't because it's aluminium. I don't know why they did it, because obviously it never really caught on. And I read somewhere about a different type of car that had alley doors, and they, did, they then went back to steel doors because it was more cost effective. I don't understand why you'd make aluminium panels here. Maybe, come oh, on. Oh. No, because it wasn't even an old car thing. I was gonna say maybe it was because it was obviously 50s, it was after the war, and you had all the aluminium production for the aeroplanes and stuff in the wall, didn't you? But I don't know. Easier to roll a alley door than it is a steel one. One bolt. It's <laughs> brand new.
This is the standard wrong size bolt measurement of two nuts and a washer for locking purposes and four washers for packing out purposes. And it's right next to the chassis legs. I can't get my finger on it. That's great. Sausage fingers. Well, technically, we should have breakage now. Because the piston's working. So if I go down and put some brake juice in, you know that run down and give it a pump and we can crack it there, we should be able to get fluid out the back of that and make sure that that's working. And then if it's working there, we should be able to get it at the front wheels. Fingers and legs, necks crossed. But the wheel cylinders don't pop. Here's the brake juice bottle. Put some freshly recycled uh, brake stopper juice in there. Yummy. Also, while we're down here, before I forget, because I don't think I've mentioned it yet. Who, this was, when, it, when I got the car, this was out. This was in the back of the car. Like who, who cuts a headlight panel out to get the light out? Like, and it's not great to put back together. The more I sort of look at it, the more you realize it's not. Um, it's, oh, there's inside. It's not, um, it's not the cleanest. I'll be honest. There's fluid there, but there's not much. It's definitely pushing air. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so, it's working. Like, I might have had the face full. <laughs> it's working. And I didn't release the pedal and draw loads of air back in. Okay, so it's now Monday, and I kind of forgot what happened on Friday. I just sort of like down the tools and skedaddled because we had a bit of a, a bit of a moment. I did fix the mower though. I did fix the mower, um, sorted that out, got that running, went home, cut the grass, obviously lovely weekend. Um, and then I drank half a bottle of whiskey and cut a hedge with a chainsaw, but the garden's fine. The problem on Friday actually refers back to this. Fingers and legs. Next crossed. But the wheel cylinders don't pop. Yep. Oh sh Okay, we fast forwarded a little bit from last time you saw us. Um, like a Wally, I didn't charge up the batteries on the microphones since last week when they turned up. I was meant to do it over the weekend and forgot because of the whole getting the up with the brakes and storming out the door scenario. Um, what we've done is uh, a little bit of a bodge because I don't want to pay all this money for the wheel cylinders because they're rarer than a unicorn laying a golden egg out of its back passage. Um, what we've done is just delete it. So obviously the idea is there's two wheel cylinders on the brakes and two shoes and when you push your foot on the brake it pushes the shoes out and bites against the inside edge of the drum. Obviously one of them's broken and one of them works. So we've deleted that one and we've put the flexi pipe straight into the wheel cylinder and the bleed nipple. Um, so now it works like a V. So it still pushes one out. So there's still resistance, 
there's just not as much resistance, if that makes sense. And the other side has got both working. So naturally, when you put your foot on the brake, it breaks the wrong way for the right hand corner. But that's fine, at least it's got some sort of stopping power, right? Um, we've done that, I've put a harness in it, I've strapped the seat in, I've foamed up the column and the pillar and all them little bits and bobs. I'm just in the middle of the process of uh, sorting the bonnet out. They've got double skin, or a two skin bonnet, I should say, where that one's attached to that one with these little rivets down the middle, but they split. So you're allowed to put these plates on, obviously I'll cut these off. Um, and because again, because it's alley, um, I'm just gonna put a little strip on here, bolting on both sides for the bonnet bolts to stop the bonnet ripping off. So that's the last sort of few bits. We need to run it really, because we don't know if it stops. It starts and runs, but it doesn't really stop. Um, wheels and tires. Um, what else have we got to do? I'm not sure if I put any oil in the diff. Need to get this out of the way for the time being, again, um, and get the jag down from Eastbourne, sort the steering out without whatever the issue was, um, go over it, nut and bolt check, make sure everything's okay, clean the carburetor, because there was that little misfire scenario going down the straight, if you remember from episode two, I think. That's racing on Saturday and it's Monday, so we need to crack on with that. That can take a back seat, that's coming down. That about rounds it up for this one. So obviously as normal, if you've enjoyed it, if you found it funny, if you chuck us a subscribe, a like, a comment, a share, anything like that, it helps us out in the long run. Catch you in the next one.